Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I want to clarify something. Somebody asked this as a question. Uh, they also want to know if I do Q&A, which I'm going to do a whole other video on getting polls if you guys want me to do Q&As. Um, but the question is, is Dimitri, can you explain to me, or in general to this channel, right? What is a fake financial engineering degree? What is a fake quant degree? Um, they put it in quotes too, because a lot of times I talk about, you know, like the fake degrees. Um, but I wanted to clarify this in multiple kind of facets and discussion here. Trying to do this in the best way possible without coming off as arrogant, um, out coming off as like full headed. Like I get a lot of feedback from people that are upset. They think that I'm like egotistical. And so I'm gonna dive on in here anyways and do the best I can without offending too many people. So first off, when I talk about fake financial engineering degrees in specifics, let's figure out what financial engineering is. So a financial engineering degree is not a degree to do like a general quantitative scope of skills. Financial engineering within itself is actually engineering financial derivative products. So when you think about the most simple format here, you think of like a call option, you think of like a put option, and then you can do crazy combinations and you can make, you know, like butterfly spreads and condors and you can do all kinds of stuff with, you know, derivative options. Uh, but part of this is also the fact that you can make custom options. So you can do things like credit default swaps and CDOs and there's all kinds of different like other products that are essentially the option or the right to do something and then trying to price that. So how do you price those, right? You can't just plug in a Black-Scholes equation and then get like this simple equation at the end. And then on top of that, what a lot of people don't really realize, especially if you're coming from a finance background, is the Black-Scholes model, it's not correct. We all know this, right? Like, but from a finance perspective, you don't know that. You don't understand when I say like, it's not correct. The Black-Scholes is not correct. Black, Fisher Black knew this. He knows it's not correct, right? So then people are looking at me like, well, Dimitri, you think you know everything, right? If it's not correct, then why are we using it? The Black-Scholes model is a closed form solution. So this means essentially you can write out the equation in a simple format and you can quickly calculate um, the value of a call option or a put option. So this is amazing. This is like groundbreaking. It's why the Black Shoals is so popular. But that being said, there are a lot of assumptions that don't hold within this you know, framework. And for example, one of these is volatility. How do you calculate volatility? Should you use implied volatility? There's a lot of different aspects of the model that essentially are just assumptions that you have to have to get this nice, pretty, format to get quick pricing. So now, just to explain this in general, a lot of top financial engineering programs start with the Black-Scholes. You do all the derivations and all the mathematics and all the stochastic calculus and Ito's lemma and all that to get to uh, the actual Black-Scholes. Then you should be spending a year and a half to two years essentially going from the Black-Scholes, going around, figuring out you know, how do you adjust all these assumptions to make it more accurate. You're never going to get a closed form solution. It's gonna take you a long time to even get to some you know, answer of what this option's worth. And then you should be going all the way around and by the time you finish your program, you should end up back at the top realizing the Black-Scholes option is great, the formula is amazing, uh, it's, it's fast, it's efficient, it's closed form. Um, yes, you can do all this other work that they teach. You can do all this other engineering and adjustments to these equations, but you're not going to end up with a pretty closed form solution. So this is a real financial engineering program. It's focused on financial engineering, engineering financial products. This does not include stocks. I mean, no one really cares in financial engineering. Oh, you know, how are we gonna price stocks and bonds? And like, these aren't important. That's not financial engineering. If you wanna go be a stock trader, you wanna be a bond trader, uh, you wanna do commodity trading, get out of financial engineering. It's not for you. Um, financial engineering can be done for like, you know, options on fixed income. So bonds like the Black, Derm, and Toy models used for pricing. Uh, fixed incomes, again, the Black-Scholes is pricing equities, but these are all derivative products, something that's more complex, uh, that's dependent on an actual asset like an equity, like a commodity. Um, so I guess commodities are a little different because you can also have uh, swaps and agreements there, but essentially there are derivative products for all these other products. So this is not general finance. So now that I've rambled for literally five minutes here, the question is what is a real financial engineering program and what is a fake financial engineering program? 
So this is my opinion. Um, this also comes though from essentially the industry, the financial engineering realm, even quantitative finance. When we hire people, we're looking for someone with a very, very, very rigorous mathematical background. And I even saw an entire post today I was reading about someone complaining that's a recruiter for quants that like, Computer science and finance is complete crap. It's great, but you can teach somebody that on the job. What's really, really hard is the math and getting all this math down. And so real financial engineering programs as I'm going to call them. So the real programs here, uh, these are programs that are focusing on the mathematics in like vast, vast amounts of detail. So the best way to like, just kind of like figure this out and like compare. So I'm gonna have two programs on here. I'm not gonna say which programs these are, um, but the, like a program one would be an amazing Amazing program, a great program. It spends at least one semester diving in just a stochastic calculus. It should spend, you know, another class on derivative products, specifically like how you modify these derivatives, how you do optimization within programming these derivative products, uh, how you correct derivative products, how you do volatility calculations, um, all the theoretical concepts behind volatility within itself. These are very, very detailed topics and you'll spend like a year and a half to two years literally only doing this. That's all you're learning. Um, program two now is going to be a fake financial engineering program, which I like to call it. And these programs you'll see have a vast amount of classes you can take. So there's only one class on financial derivatives. Uh, this is a huge red flag. This means it's not an actual financial engineering program because you can't learn the black shawls on this pretty little format they give you in business school, which is the closed form solution. Think you know what you're doing and could trade derivative products. Um, you don't really know what's going on. You don't really understand the assumptions behind it. Uh, you don't even know if the assumptions are broken. You wouldn't even have an idea of which way they're going. Like is it overpriced or underpriced? So these programs I call fake financial engineering programs and rightfully so I think is that programs like business school, so MBAs are one example. Um, they're the main example, but there are also other programs like business analytics, uh, analytics programs, even data science programs. They're running out there and giving you this very, very superficial like overview. Like you just take one class on derivatives. It's very simple. It's very mundane. There's literally no math in the program. Um, what they consider math isn't really math. It's like just quick, quick, like jumping through all these. Uh, but then you take one on that. You take one on risk management. You take one on you know finance. Take one on equities. One on bonds. Like it's quickly like going through all these topics. And you can take marketing. And you can take computer science. And like you literally don't get enough information in one. Area area to be an expert on anything. So for me, essentially this is a fake master's degree because it's not diving deep enough. Now, let me say this in clarity for everybody. These programs are not bad programs. It's not that it's like a bad degree and you shouldn't go here. These degrees, these fake financial engineering degrees, I call them fake for the sense that they're tagging on financial engineering because they want a specific type of student or they want some specific type of like connotation on how bright and amazing the program is. And I'm extremely disappointed with many of these programs. Uh, they're running out and getting a STEM designation as if this means something. Like a, I had a person tell me, oh, it's a STEM degree. I've had like six people I've actually talked to say, Dimitri, I went to this program. It's great, it's amazing. And then I critique their resume and I tell them like, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. You're not gonna get a job doing this, 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 and this. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, this is just the reality, but you should probably be looking at these types of jobs because this is what your degree is aimed for. Um, I would never personally hire you. I can't imagine any other banks, hedge funds, uh, anything else would hire you for this job when you are really set up for this other job. And so my point being is that there are a lot of these programs that are good programs. They're general analytics ones. So you get, uh, like for example, these programs, like that program two that's a fake one, it's gonna cover uh, financial engineering in broad, it's gonna cover like a stocks class in broad, it's going to cover like a Python class and like a blockchain class. And it's good to get a little bit of each of these, but the jobs you're actually applying for will not be financial engineering jobs. It will not be risk management jobs jobs, um, you will be going towards like business analytics. So you need to go through something that is not statistical driven. It's not heavy, heavy amounts of mathematics. It's going to be something that's very business focused and that's completely fine. There are amazing jobs like operational research would be one of these jobs, which would be on the higher end of analytics, um, but you wouldn't be a financial engineer. I don't even think I'd call you a quant in most situations, but there are definitely exceptions. Um, but business analytics is a huge industry. It's amazing. There's 
there's a lot out there and I really wish these programs, these fake financial engineering degrees, for example, would go out there and actually do, um, and actually change their, their designation and say, you know, hey, we're a business analytics program. We're gonna be the best business analytics program out there. We're gonna teach our students X, Y, and Z. Uh, we're focused on financial business analytics and really drive that home. But when programs go out there and convince their students that, you know, we're a financial engineering program, and you're going up against Carnegie Mellon, you know, University of Michigan used to have a great program. I think they're still working through it. Um, Columbia, NYU, Baruch, University of Chicago, like there's a lot of great programs out there. And when you come from a business school with essentially a business degree, you're kind of stuck in this realm of like, you are applying for these jobs which you're not gonna apply for. And so it's really hard for me to explain to students without like offending you or essentially saying like, I know your degree promised you this, but this doesn't exist. What you're trained to do is this other job. Um, but that's kind of it, guys. That's kind of like the plethora here. And just to kind of point out another facet here that why this makes it more difficult and why I'm not happy with a lot of these, these programs uh, labeling themselves as financial engineering is that what happens is you go out there and you don't have an MBA, so you're not a business person. Um, you don't technically have a real financial engineering degree. You don't have the amount of rigor that I would be looking for in an interview. And so when you interview with me, I'm never gonna hire you to do quantitative analytics or quantitative finance or typically even data science related model development sphere and kind of realm here. Um, but you're stuck in the middle. So it's hard because when you see the jobs, they're typically posted as like business background, masters in finance, MBA. Or that says, you know, quantitative finance, financial engineering, top program, mathematics, physics, uh, applied economics, stuff like that. And so then when you come out with this weird degree in the middle, the financial engineers don't feel like you're qualified the business people don't feel like you're qualified and you're kind of screwed because the program's mislabeled your program. So I'm gonna stop it right here. It's like 12 minutes and 30 seconds, guys. Uh, I just wanna basically show you that like, this is what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to be make mean or rude or derogatory, but when you have programs that are trying to label themselves as something that they're not, they're not actually engineering derivative products are not a financial engineering program. And again, I apply this to a lot of this when I say fake programs. It's not that your program is dumb or stupid or like a bad program. You could be a stellar program, great job placement, making great money when you come out. Um, you're just not going to be a financial engineer. Like I'm technically not a financial engineer. I don't do financial engineering. Um, I do touch financial risk markets, which is the quantitative finance realm. I do touch securitization and other aspects of like the financial engineering, quantitative finance realm but I'm by no means would consider myself a financial engineer because I am not engineering derivative products. So that's kind of my wrap up on that. If you guys have questions, like seriously, just shoot below like what your question is. If you want clarity, uh, I've had a lot of different people email me and say, hey, Demetri, are these programs great or these not? Um, I hate kind of going through those in a sense that like it's hard for me to tell students like, yeah, this program really sucks, but then have to sugarcoat it into a way that like it's not the best program. But again, like I said, if you want to do financial engineering, it's not going to be good. If you want to do something different, business analytics, for example, operational research, um, even corporate finance, things like that, these degrees might be amazing. If you want to work in traditional finance, doing trading, um, these other degrees might be great, but you're not going to want a financial engineering degree. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.